2 Timothy 3, six. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. Hebrew 11.3 Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Titus 1.2 in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Genesis 3.22 And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, is no good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the, God, the Lord God sent him, forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Numerous verses of the Bible on what may be viewed as having cosmological relevance may be interpreted without logic or necessarily standing in contradiction to contemporary empirical scientific insights and observations or of ancient ideas regarding cosmology that were associated with scriptural values by some. Some of the past sought to use the Bible as a scientific text for explaining otherwise unexplained cosmological phenomena, yet that wasn't itself given as an instruction on the Bible itself. Where the Bible does mention or refer to empirical structures, often it does so in ways such that the reference object paradigm could be visualized with numerous different paradigmata contingent upon the state of learning of the reader. Contemporary science is not in conflict with the Bible so much as the way some traditionalists interpret select reference object paradigms in scripture. I'm not preaching to a choir. I will examine the depths and limits of human knowledge and show that it does not controvert nor transcend sacred scripture and the veracity of its physical paradigms. I write with the belief that any intelligent reader, even the lost, could agree that the observable universe is God's creation, or the lesser proposition that nothing in the observable universe precludes God's having created it. I wanted to interpolate uh, an idea here I had recently that is derived from Plotinus Neo, a uh, Platonic philosopher of the fourth century, of the third century AD. He wondered why God, or the one uh, term that he used for God, created anything at all since he was absolutely perfect. And one can make an inference from that that if God is absolutely perfect, anything that he created was less so, it would be less than perfect, or even imperfect. Uh, that is, God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, while anything he created would not be equally so. Or, And because they were all imperfect parts, uh, creations and Plotinus made that observation that everything was a broken form that was created. Uh, it, Plotinus was heavily influenced by Plato. Because of that, um, mankind could never, through his own works, uh, please God, uh, be acceptable to God for eternity. Yet, through Jesus Christ, who is God, it would be possible. Uh, for mankind to exist for eternity through Jesus Christ only um, and that makes total consistent sense um, and that is the basis uh, ultimately I suppose at the high end for why uh, original sin does exist and uh, once mankind got out of uh, God's perfect relationship almost within the mind of God uh, in the Garden of Eden, um, he was bound to fall as an independent being and be less than perfect. 
For many, faith in God and the Lord Jesus Christ have been shaken by scientific development, technology, and theory, so much so that government seems to encourage change to move beyond Christian thought. In this book, I will show that contemporary science, cosmology, and evolution have not controverted the truth of the Holy Bible. Conversely, modern physics and quantum cosmology theory provide advanced theoretical points of support for theological opinion concerning the nature of God and the reality of his method for reconciliation of the elect into his will. Christology of John and the Logos exemplify the universal and transcending ideas of the apostles about Jesus Christ and God that may be juxtaposed with pre-Big Bang cosmological speculation about a timeless state before time and light were issued in an expanding universe that grew like a great tree with many branches for all manner of things to live in. 1 John 1.1.5 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Second Mark 4, 30, 32. And he said, where unto, where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? 31. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the garden, in the earth. 32. When it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs, and shooteth out great branches, and so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow. Uh, CF Matthew 31, 33, Genesis 1, 1, 7. For the Lord Jesus Christ did not necessarily mean everything he said literally. That is, he spoke in parables and used figures of speech. Consider not only lilies, regard the use of the word mounted in Mark 11:23, where it may be taken to be a metaphor. 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto his mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Mountains may be regarded as large spiritual issues the Christian is challenged to overcome. Rather than being, rather than taking the meaning of mountain literally as if Mount Everest would be cast into the Indian Ocean, it may be interpreted as descriptive of social and spiritual cha challenges from small to the largest often within the Christian. That criteria, criterion is interesting to the philosophical that are interested in epistemology, the theory of knowledge. That field advanced quite a lot in the 20th century. Empiricism was surpassed by Quine, Strassen, and various analytic philosophers, yet existentialism and the problem of self-verifying knowledge that is expressed in the problem of solipsism persisted and had a counterpart in the division of knowledge into categories of internal and external, or intentional and extensional. It hadn't been addressed sharply enough by empiricism. The origins of the epistemological criterion was in Kant's critique of pure reason. Jesus Christ said in effect that epistemological and contental consciousness issues of whatever size may be overcome with faith, as the Christian is joined to the primitive monistic field or kingdom of God through the grace of the Lord Jesus, it follows that subjective spiritual or psychological problems are eclipsed as well as the power or significance of temporal problematic material objects with faith in the primary monistic field creator. The contingent field problems fade away, or are vacated, perhaps. Christians may interpret cosmological and end times events from different perspectives, depending upon what sort of hermeneutic they use. Pre-tribulationists may interpret John's revelation symbolism differently than post-tribulationists. One can, in turn, interpret symbolism of the revelation differently, even with a pre-trib hermeneutic. J. Vernon McGee commented in a radio lecture that this is the age of the Church of Smyrna when he was commenting on the Revelation. Post-tribulationists, a.k.a. post-millennialists, would find that off nearly 2,000 years, more or less, if taken literally. Yet, McGee may have meant that people of the day today behaved like the people of the Church of Smyrna. In that case, the description is appropriate diagnostically, for today as well as in John's time. In this <clears throat> book, I excuse me. I consider biblical meanings for eschatology from pre-trib and post-trib paradigms to extrapolate even farther within those traditions. In addition to considering what end times reference terms mean 
within a scientific point of view. Darwinism lies in opposition to 12th century science, often used by Christian fundamentalists as a paradigm against which to interpret the book of Genesis. Biology is in physics, of course, and creation content of Genesis isn't limited to biology. It is useful to say that words are representational and that physical cosmology and its mechanics differ from the words describing the creative acts of Genesis. It is difficult for a human being to imagine God so great as to understand every thought of every human being alive and to pre-know the location of every quantum particle, its destiny and purpose in accomplishing the providence of God. Yet, in a sense, with God being omnipotent, that's somewhat like the one uh, monistic field, uh, understanding, uh, having an inventory of all the parts within itself. Uh, Amidst all of the force fields that will ever be, it is challenging to understand how such a God who has always existed before any universe existed can care about the lives of the people he has allowed to exist in his creation, yet he does. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared as a human in order to bring the elect unto eternal life with God. The Lord atoned for humanity's condition of sin, pervasive and original, that made all human works unacceptable and paid the debt of sin for those of faith. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice unto God, given by God. It is difficult to understand how God cared so much for humanity as to sacrifice his only begotten son, except to know that is what love is. There is room for speculating about how cosmological mechanics creating the universe actualized in themselves rather than as images inferred from verbal descriptions in Genesis. Consider that if a teenager provided a few hundred words about how a trip to Africa was, for example, it might be difficult to actually get an accurate idea of what the teenager experienced such that one could paint a picture of it with as much accuracy at least as photographs would have provided. Was the biblical flood local in Mesopotamia or did it cover the whole earth? Did earth in the time of the ancient past uh, such as that of Solomon's era not just mean land or dirt rather than world or round world? Does the flood story of water covering the land require interpretation to mean that the entire planet was covered under flood water? Would anyone reading Genesis in Solomon's court have given a thought to a round planet being covered with water? Would the flood story have meant that to Solomon? Scientific theories are less than concise, exhaustive, and fallible records of the history and future of reality. Theories change with seasons of new understanding and our descriptions of the way physical forces are happening now and in ways that they may have happened in the past. A big bang may have occurred yet Alternatively, membranes may have collided like clanging cymbals, sending energizing vibrations into quantum reality. Multiverse theory is a universe itself, of theories of creation that are subject to the will of spirit to shape a universal or multi-universal field in the beginning to a destined form. Divine mechanics are beyond the reach of even the most accurate fundamental theory a human or computer mind could create. All points in space-time may already exist in eternity for God. One ought not to limit oneself to using Dark Ages scientific interpretations for understanding Genesis. God is not limited to such means, and methods as were understood by 12th century physicists, nor those of the 21st century. End times events of the Revelation mostly occurred in the 1st century. Biblical eschatology is a field misunderstood by millions of Christians and non-believers. The Revelation mostly describes the end time of the era, before the kingdom of God arrived through the Lord Jesus Christ. In the first century, the destruction of Jerusalem was the ultimate chapter of the tribulation. It is generally a view held by preterists and postmillennialists and myself. Not only do secularists and scientists misunderstand critical portions of Genesis and the Revelation, so do millions of American Christians. The end of the universe is thus commonly misunderstood when it is applied to the Revelation. The kingdom of God is spiritual and may transcend the material world when or if it is God's will that it do so. When the church descended upon mankind as a new Jerusalem, a spiritual Jerusalem in that period, when the temple of the old Jerusalem was destroyed, God thereafter lived in the hearts and minds of those that are of the Lord's flock. Consider the nature of the kingdom of God and what it means. Theologians differ about it from gentry to chiliasts. One might expect that it is the most deep of subjects unfathomable in some respects, yet all are called and few are chosen. In a practical sense, the kingdom of God might be considered to be a circle at the center of which is the Lord calling for the people of the world to enter the kingdom of God. Not all hear the call. 
hence just the preselected that are chosen enter. The kingdom of God is spiritual within and without the individual. The divine Logos, who took upon himself flesh as Jesus Christ, is the way for humanity of the elect to enter eternal life as the Lord in the kingdom of God. Christianity is supposed to increase to become a majority of the world, though it may take thousands of years. When there are few unregenerated souls spiritually dead remaining on earth, the Lord will then return. The physical fate of the universe is somewhat of an ancillary curiosity for those interested in natural philosophy. Study of the cosmos is not an unproductive endeavor, and it is on the same practical foundation as farming is, except that one may try to learn more about the spirit, perhaps through quantum mechanical investigations of particle waves and fields. Maybe one may appreciate more about what spirit is by understanding what it is not, and then comprehending that spirit sustains even the most basic quanta of the universe. Christians will need to have rational scientific dialogue with the lost during the interregnum between periods of the Lord being physically present on earth. Christian missions work will benefit from deep competence in cosmology and may find the opportunity to bring more souls to the Redeemer with contemporary knowledge of physical theories, as a turbo-apologetics perhaps.